All right, all right, everyone. So welcome back to another episode of Everything Business. Right, as was promised, I am going to be looking at the balance sheet, right, or the statement of financial position for this income statement that I did earlier. So the income statement, as you can see, it's here, right? That is the one that we did earlier. I showed the tutorial how to do this one. So let's look at the balance sheet or the income statement, the um, statement of financial position. So firstly, you want to start with the name again, your heading. So Elbin's statement of financial position. Or you can just write balance sheet. That's still okay. No, that still works. So let's write balance sheet. So Elbin's balance sheet. And then the date. You write the date in this format as at. It's the 30th of September, right? 30th of September, 2008. So let's correct this. This is supposed to be as at. All right. So... That is your heading, right? Always write your heading. So we are going to in, input information here. Dollar sign. Now, I must say that this is a simple balance sheet or a simple statement of financial position because it's a simple income statement, all right? Um, hopefully, in my next upload, I will be able to look at a more complex income statement and the statement of financial position, all right? So that is the hope. All right. So let's look at what we need to do for the income, the statement of financial position. Now, looking back at our trial balance, there are certain items that we would have used from our trial balance, right? For the income statement, for the statement of financial position or the balance sheet, the balance sheet is a total account, right? The balance sheet really shows the accounting equation. So what it shows is the assets, capital, and liabilities of the business. That's really what it shows, right? So as long as you know what assets are, capital is, and what liabilities are, then you should be fine. But you just need to know um, and memorize the format of the balance sheet. So the balance sheet really, this simple, will have four headings, right? And we're going to look at those four headings now. So the first heading is fixed assets. So that's the first heading, fixed assets, right? Um, in, in a more advanced course, they, 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 they can call them non-current assets as well, the same thing. Now, if you look at our trial balance, then you have to look and identify your fixed assets. So right off the bat, I am able to identify two fixed assets, motor van and office equipment. And it is important that you, you know the order in which you state, right, your fixed assets. We use what is called order of permanence in terms of how we know which item should come first. So with the order of permanence, you list the items that are most permanent first, right? So in this case, you have motor van, you have office equipment, right? These are our two fixed assets, right? So we are going to list the most permanent one first, right? Which is motor van. Then, you have office equipment. So the motor van, and in this question, there's no need to adjust, um, to adjust them, the fixed assets, right? In other questions that I will do, I will show you how we have to make adjustments for depreciation with them. So motor van is one is four thousand one hundred. Office equipment is 6,250, 250. And so we will now just add up these. We will add these two figures. Pull out a calculator. So you have 4,100 plus 6,250. 
that is equal to 10,350. So 10,350. So that's our total fixed assets. And then we have another heading. The second heading is what we call current assets. Right, that's our second heading for the statement of financial position. You normally start with opening stock, not opening stock, sorry, closing stock. So closing stock. And it is the closing stock that you would have used in our income statement. So it's the amount is the same, 27,475. And you would put the information in the first column. And if you have three columns, then it would be in the middle column, right? Now, current assets, we allocate current assets or we record current assets in a specific order as well. We call it the order of liquidity, right? So what we do is we list the assets, the current assets that are less liquid first. And when we talk about liquid, we are talking about how easy it is to convert to cash. So we list the assets that are less liquid first and go down to the most liquid. Cash would obviously be the most liquid because it's already in cash form. So closing the stop. And then you would have your debtors. Right? Another name for debtors would be what? Accounts receivable. Right? So you will see you will see you may see accounts receivable is just the same. So our debtors amount in this case, in this example. Is what 12,300 12,300 and then bank or cash in bank, right? Cash at bank is 3,115, 3,115, and then cash in hand. Cash in hand, you can just write cash. Um, that is $295, $295. So we add up all our current assets. So let's go 27,475 plus 12,300 plus 3,115 plus 295. And that gives us 43,185. So 43,185 dollars. All right, so that's our total current assets, and this is a simple balance sheet, as I said before. And then we move to the next heading, which is less current liability. Liability, if it's one, liabilities, if it's more than one. In this case, I should know better because I am going to need another column, All right. So let me just insert it from now. All right. So if you look, our current liabilities, I we have two because we have creditors or accounts payable and we also have loan, right? Now they didn't specify if this was a long-term or short-term loan. The fact that they just have loan, right? We are going to assume that it's a short-term loan. Right, they didn't specify. So we have creditors, and we call it accounts payable, and we also have loan from P parking. So that's P parking loan. So let's put in the information. So for creditors, it is nine thousand three hundred and seventy. 9,370 and for the loan it is five thousand dollars and so we add these two to get our current liabilities figure right which would be fourteen thousand three hundred and seventy right fourteen thousand three hundred and seventy and that is our current liabilities Right, the heading said that we should less current liabilities, which means that we should subtract. So we're going to be subtracting our current liabilities 
from our current assets to get what is called our working capital. So there is our total current assets for 43,185. We are going to minus 14,370, and that will give us 28,815. 28,815. And this is what we call our working capital. Right. Who knows the formula for working capital? Can you put it in the in the comment section with the, the formula for working capital in the comment section? So now we have our working capital. We are going to add our working capital to our total fixed assets to get our first double line figure, right? It's actually as, as a name, you know, but we don't normally use the name. So we're going to add it, our working capital, to our net um fixed assets which is 10350 and we get 39165 39165 and this is our first double line figure it is actually called net total fixed assets All right but people don't normally we don't normally write the name of it so let's move to the last heading now the last heading in this simple um balance sheet is financed by now the finance by section really shows just how you know the business is financed so it's going to have information like the capital of the business so the capital that we start out with the capital figure we look in the trial balance for the capital figure and it is 22,000 sorry 955 25,000 25,955. We are going to add our net profit. Add net profit. And we would have gotten our net profit now from our income statement. So the income statement, here it is. The net profit figure is 21,630. 21,630. 21, so we're going to add it. So let's get our calculators out. So it is 25,955 plus 21,630. That gives us 47,585. 47,585. Right. And then now we're going to subtract our drawings. Remember I told you about drawings from in the previous video? That we it's an expense, but we use it in the income in the balance sheet. So the drawings figure is eight thousand four hundred and twenty. Eight thousand four hundred and twenty. And you do the subtraction, right? So you say minus eight thousand four hundred and twenty gives us thirty nine thousand one hundred and sixty five. Thirty nine thousand. 165 and that is our double line figure and you will realize that it is the same as our first double line figure right so see it is the same and this is how you know that your balance sheet is correct you know when your double line figures are the same so you can now confidently state that your balance sheet is correct and you know that you didn't make any error in the the question all right and so that's basically how to do a simple balance sheet right when i upload my next upload i'll try to do a more complex income statement and um a more complex complex balance sheet right so what good that's it for now what good put your 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 um comments in the comment section. Let me know what it is that you want me to do, right? Um and you know see you in the next one. All right.